not WBEV 95X or Good Karma Brands. Well, it must be spring. The robins are coming back. The geese are flying north. And the one and only Dick Zondag from Jung Garden Center is in Randolph is making his visit, his uh, house call to WBEV to answer gardening questions. Good morning, sir. Yeah, good morning, John. How are you? How was your winter? Oh, it was it was pretty good actually. Um, the we had a good snowpack, so uh, the the ground didn't get too cold, and uh, the, I, I suspect that uh, most of the perennials and things like that survived the winter very well. And uh, people are gardening. We are so busy at Jung's that uh, we're selling out of a lot of things already. Mm. So. Uh, yeah, we're 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 running uh, day and night actually. What are some of the items that are, uh, people should get in in the next few days, or they're gone? Well, they're, they're, quite a few of the fruit trees are are sold out in the mail order already, but mm. we've reserved quite a few trees for the garden center, so there will be plenty of bare root trees for the garden center, and the the uh, bare root room will open on April one. We're starting it uh, on a specific date in in each of the five John Garden Centers, and uh, so the, the the plants will be available after uh, April 1. So, you know, the quicker you get in, the, the better selection you'll have. So um, time to time to think about spring. You know, the, the with the rain that we had last night, uh, the, the uh, grass should be growing pretty yes. soon, so time to get out there and get your first application of uh, fertilizer on for spring because the spring... Uh, uh, is the time to, to for that that the grass grows, and so uh, getting that first uh, application of uh, fertilizer on will get your grass nice and thick, so that the crabgrass won't have a chance to germinate, which will happen probably in another four or five weeks. So, time to get out there and start working. All right, and uh, again, we are taking uh, this program to the next level. Uh, not only are you uh, here on uh, WBEV with me, uh, uh, Dick, we are also on DailyDodge.com. We're streaming video right now. Yeah, so we're, tr- we're trying something a little different. Yeah, you know, uh, we'll go ahead and wave to, to the camera, Dick. and get a few more people watching. So. There you go. Wave to the camera, Dick. Let them know what you look like. Hi, I'm here. (laughs) (laughs) And we do have our first caller of the morning, 885-4446-1920-885-4446. If you have a question for Dick Zondag from Jung Garden Center, let's go to the first call of the spring season. You're on the air. Wow, what a special treatment. Uh, Yeah. Hey, uh, Dick, a couple quick questions for you. Um, uh, the, The first one... Uh, I know you're talking about trees for planting outside, but uh, what about the uh, indoor ones, like the little lemon and lime trees? Do you have those yet? Oh, yes. Yeah, we have those, and, uh, um, you know, they're starting to see that it's time to start growing, so they're starting to put on new growth. So, yeah, you can get those, and uh, um, probably should put them in a little bigger pot than we have them in right now, but uh, they're, um, they're ready to go. Outstanding. Okay. And the second question, uh, unfortunately, I moved and had to leave my big garden behind. This year, I'm going to probably just do, like, planters. Um, Can you talk about uh, maybe a couple options for sun and for partial shade that are kind of like a value-based? I want them to look good, but I don't want to spend hundreds of dollars on annuals. Um, I mean, I know about the marigolds and pansies, you know, but... Uh, are there any other options that are kind of a value base that do well in planters? I'll hang up and listen to your answer. Thanks sure. for coming back this year. Yep. Um, the first thing you got to think about is the soil that you put in it, and uh, we actually have our um, potting mix on sale, our Jung family uh, uh, potting soil. And uh, so that's the first thing you got to think about. Um, as far as the Plants that you put in them, uh, the things that you want for for sunny areas are, you know, some of the decorative vegetables like the Bright Lights uh, Swiss chard might be a good thing. Um, Most people use planters for for flowers, and so, you know, the sunflowers would be geraniums and uh, petunias are some of the trailing petunias that will look very good in planters. and for the shade ones, uh, begonias, of course, impatience, 
those sorts of things. Of course, the begonias you'd have to dig out of the container in the fall and store over winter because they would not make it through the winter. Um, and in fact, with a planter, if you've got any perennials in it, you probably are going to have to move it into the garage so you get a, a lot less cold weather on that soil. So um, those are some of the ideas for containers. Uh, vegetables, um, tomatoes, of course, peppers, you can grow those in the containers, but you want to use indeterminate tomatoes, which grow to a certain height, and then they stop and just keep producing tomatoes. Um, we have, we'll have those in the store probably in the middle of April. So um, that's what we should, you should do for containers. All right, let's go to the other line. You're on the air with Dig Zondag from John Garden Center. Good morning. Uh, what could you... My wife has a lot of trouble with uh, cutworm cutting off the tomatoes. She lost about 30 plants last year. What do you have for, what can we do? There are some uh, pesticides, some soil pesticides that you can use for cutworms. Uh, Captain Jack's uh, bug juice is one of them that they make in a preparation that works in the soil. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of really effective ones have been banned. Um, the other thing you can do is cultural things. Uh, if uh, you wrap the uh, the tomato stems with newspaper at ground level, that will also kind of inhibit the cutworms from uh, getting through to the, to the uh, stems. And of course, once they get some growth on them, the stems that are coming out of the ground harden, harden up a little bit and then they're less susceptible to the cutworms also. Yeah, these are like transplants and they're a pretty good size. You know, they look okay. good one day and the next morning they're killing over. It could be, yeah, it, 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 boy, if they're good size already, uh, cutworms usually don't, don't bother them. Um, but she, she finds, uh, she says a cutworm, I, I think it's a black worm, yeah. when she digs down. Right. And she, that's what she finds and then kills it, you know. Well, that, that, uh, um, soil preparation of Captain J Jack's bud juice and we have a couple of others in the garden center also that if you come in and you ask the people that are there you know at Junks we don't only have one person that can help you uh, the people in yeah. the garden centers have, have uh, our gardeners themselves and have a lot of uh, good suggestions for different uh, insect problems so you know just come into Junk Garden Center and uh, they'll be able to point you to the right uh, soil insecticide for cutworms. Okay. And the other thing is, uh, are you going to get any beaver dam pepper seed? Uh, I think we have or... some beaver dam pepper seed. Um, uh, the only way that you would really know for sure is if you call the store and ask them there. Um, mm -hmm. I, I'm pretty sure we have beaver dam peppers uh and we'll have, I think, pretty sure we've got beaver and pepper plants on the list this year also. Okay. Um, yeah, we do. Uh, most are buying down at uh, Sun Prairie because they're a lot closer. Right. You know, and um, I could. I guess we could give them a call once. Or yeah, they should have the same them. the same products that we'd have in Randolph. So. Yeah, I know. So far, my wife hasn't been able to find any. <laughs> so. Okay, thank you. Yep, thanks for calling. Yep, thank bye. you very much. 885-4446-1920, 885-4446. If you want to get on the air with Dig Zondag. From Jung Garden Center in Randolph, we are broadcasting on WBEV and Daily Dodge. The video feed is uh, being featured for the first time on this program. Let's go to the next caller. You're on the air with Dick. Good morning. Good morning. Is it time to prune the raspberries? Uh, yes, um, you can get in, and the, the ones that you want to prune are the branched ones that uh, that uh, fruited last year, because those plants are, you could almost uh, break them off by just pushing on them, because they're dead. The ones that are straight and um, are tall, those are the ones that will be fruiting this year, and uh, if they're more than uh, pencil diameter, you could cut those back a little bit, but those are the ones that have the flower buds on them. And uh, when they start to grow, what you'll see is that uh, shoots for next year will start coming up from the ground. So most raspberries are a two-year uh, project. The first year they grow as a vegetative cane, and the second year they fruit, uh, and the 
and then in the fall those canes that fruited die and the ones that are coming up through those fruiting ones are, are going to give you your fruit for next year. Okay. Thank you. Yep, thanks for calling. Bye. All right, let's go to our next caller, and you are on the air with the Garden Doctor. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, I have two questions. Okay. I You're talking about uh, fertilizing your lawn, but... What can I can I spray anything on there now that would get rid of this creeping Charlie? What you want to do is wait until the creeping Charlie becomes active because the the, the creeping Charlie and the, the perennial weeds that you would get with the uh, with the uh, weed beater ultra are still dormant and the the weed beater ultra is more effective when the plants are actively growing so. Probably there again, I would wait um, probably a month or so. And with Creeping Charlie, you almost have to put a couple of applications on. And okay. you want to follow the directions on the bottle. It tells you how much chemical you have to add per, per square foot. And so what you want to do is, is uh, figure out how much uh, con the container that you're going to put the, uh, uh, the herbicide in will cover it and you put that know, much like a, chemical like in that. Like a Hudson Springer, in, more or less. Yeah. If, if you can cover 100 square feet with uh, one uh, application of that container, that's how much okay. of the chemical you put in. But uh, it's much more effective when, uh, when the plants are actively growing. Okay. All right. The other question I have is when can I trim my lilac bushes or shrub? Okay, lilacs bloom in early spring, and the rule of thumb with shrubs is that if it blossoms before the 1st of July, the flower buds are usually on the plant before the plant goes dormant in the fall, and so you want to prune lilacs right after the, the plant is done flowering, because if you cut it now, you're going to be cutting your flowers off. So let okay. the plant flower, and then right after they get done flowering, that's when you do your pruning. Okay, thank you very much. Yep, thanks for calling. Yep. Thank you for your call, 885-4446-1920, 885-4446. This is the Garden Doctor Show here on WBEV, and we invite your call if you have any gardening-related questions. Let's go to the other line. You're on the air with Dick Zondag. Hi. Um, I would just like to follow up um, from the previous caller a little okay. bit. Okay. Um, uh, we have a yard that faces the northeast side of the house. Okay. And it has a lot of Creeping Charlie um, in it. Um, you had mentioned before that now would be the time to add more grass seed. Yes. Okay. Uh, Do you recommend doing the grass seed first and then in four or six weeks going back to kill the Creeping Charlie or... It how would you do it? Yeah, it kind of depends on how much Creeping Charlie you have. If you've got a lot of Creeping Charlie and you want to just kill everything and start over again, then Roundup would be the thing to use because Roundup will kill everything, including the grass. But once the Creeping Charlie is gone, then you'd plant your grass seed, and then it would come up thicker. Um, if you want to okay. try to keep the grass that you have, if there's not a lot of Creeping Charlie, what you'd want to do is plant the grass seed now, and then that, uh, that weed beater ultra only kills broadleaf weeds. It doesn't kill grass. So okay. uh, that, that's what All I would right. do. I'd plant so the grass would seed. Kill, that yep. would also kill the creeping charlie then if we don't have a lot? If you don't have a lot, then I would fertilize the lawn right now, uh, put the grass seed down, and then when the Creeping Charlie starts to grow, that's when you'd use the Weed Beater Ultra. Okay. Okay. Very good. Thank you. And then you'd use it maybe two or three times if you've got a lot of Creeping Charlie. Okay. Okay. Very good. Sounds good. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you very much for your call. And, again, we're here with Dig Zondag from Jung Garden Center in Randolph on WBEV and video live on Daily Dodge. Com. Let's go to the next caller. You're on the air with Dick Zondag. Um, yeah, I had called last fall that our Cleveland pear died and was looking for some, some suggestions. 
and you gave me some, and then you said to email, and you gave me more. Well, I had it on my computer, and then my computer died. Oh. So now I don't remember what you said. And we like the shape of the Cleveland pear. Yes. And wonder if what would be good to plant, and when would be a good time to plant it. Okay. Well, we have uh, several of the calorie pears, which is what Cleveland was. Not sure that we've got that particular variety, but we do have several different uh, of those calorie pears that are more ornamental. They're not uh, meant for fruiting. They're more right. uh, for flowering, and they have a very nice upright shape. So uh, I think we've got two or three different varieties of that calorie pear that we'll have potted in the garden centers. Okay, and when would you plant that? Um, I would say... Um, Probably in three or four weeks. You know, we're going to start the bare root on April 1, uh, but you want to wait until the soil is um, dried out and the excess moisture has moved through, and then you can plant any time after that. I, I think I usually tell the people that uh, when farmers start planting their oats, when you see them start working in the fields, that's when the time is to plant bare root or potted shrubs. Okay. Okay? All right. Thank you so much. Yep, Appreciate thanks. it. Bye. Thank you for thanks your for call. Coming. Let's yep. go to the other line, 885-4446, the number to call. Good morning. You're on the air with the Garden Doctor. Good morning. What would you do to increase uh, the growth of uh, violets and uh, white clover in the lawn? Okay. Um, fertilization. Uh, fertilizer makes everything grow. And so if you want... Now, are you trying to get rid of it, or are you trying to... to uh, Encourage it. Encourage it. Then uh, I would just fertilize the lawn because that will also encourage the clover and the pan and the uh, um, violets to grow. Okay. Okay. Can you can you buy violet seed or not? Most people want to kill violets. Um, I think we have some ornamental violets. Uh, most people transplant violets from. Uh, going out in the wild and digging them up and transplanting them. Most people want to get rid of violets in their lawn, so um, it's not a usual... Um, well, I prefer violets and white clover to grass. Okay. Because it, uh, it's nice and thick. Right. And uh, it doesn't grow very high. Yeah, that's true of both of those. Um, so you don't have to worry about mowing lawn so much. Right. Well, they do compete well with lawns, so I guess that's what I would do. I would encourage them by just fertilizing the lawn and not using any kind of herbicides on them. Okay. Okay. Um, do, now, like clover, that kind of sweetens the soil like putting a lime on it, right? No, clover is a legume, and it will, it will uh, increase the amount of nitrogen that's in the soil. It does not do anything to the pH. And clover, you can get seeds of clover. We have white clover um, okay. in the garden center. Yeah. So if you want clover, we have clover, but we don't have, I don't think we have violet seeds. Okay. Okay. But yeah, All just right. a general fertilization would, would uh, encourage everything to grow. All right. Thank uh, you. Yep. Would you uh, advise for maybe uh, installing AstroTurf for a <laughs> non-growing lawn? Yeah, I guess if you don't want to mow a lawn, that would be the way to go. You cover uh, your golf game, too. That's right. Yeah. Good morning. You're on the Countryside Auto Group Hotline and the Garden Doctor Hotline. Good morning. Yes. Uh, we are replacing our shrubs in the front. Um, they're on the west side of the house. Okay. I like to have some that flower. The ones I had now, how are they flowered at all? Do you rec recommend any shrubs that flower a lot during the summer? Um, Potentella is one of them that will uh, blossom, and there are yellow and white and pink. Different okay. varieties are different colors. There are some of the spireas that have not only uh, pink flowers or, or white flowers, but they also, you can buy varieties that have yellow leaves or ye yellow reddish leaves. Okay. Um, um, so there's a lot of them. If you bring a picture of your of your house in, we can help you, uh, you can. pick out what you want, want and okay. and how to how to space them. All right, that sounds good. Okay, okay, thank you very much. Thank you for calling. Sure, bye. Thank you. Eight eight five four 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 six one nine two zero eight eight five. 
four 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 six the uh, number to call right now both lines are open a good opportunity to get into the program and ask your gardening question now we do have a line lighting up good morning you're on the air good morning you're doing a great job Thank Dick you. is good for you yes yep. I, uh, I'd like to know the care and feeding of tulip trees okay tulip trees are um, Marginally hardy in Wisconsin, uh, the yep. liriodendron is the uh, is the Latin name for it, and they do get pretty little tulip flowers on the trees. But um, I guess what I would do is plant it, um, fertilize it the first year so it gets off to a good start, and then don't fertilize it because you don't want to uh, encourage excessive growth with a tulip tree. Or it um, or it grows too much. Now, are, are you talking about liriodendron, or are you talking about magnolia? Uh, no, not not magnolia. Okay, well then the liriodendron is it's it has a pretty large leaf, and then it has yep. uh, like the orange flowers. Yes. In the spring, now uh, we've had them at least five years, and they haven't done anything. Okay, uh, then I would fertilize them a little bit. Maybe do a little root pruning. Uh, where you take the, uh, a shovel and you drive it into the ground uh, to cut a few of the roots. That sometimes will stimulate the, the trees to grow. Okay. Um, and, um, yeah, that's what I would do. You know, you could take a pipe and drive it in the ground and fill that with um, a regular garden fertilizer, which would give it a, oh, sure. an adequate amount of fertilization that's to get it feet. off to a good start. What about beating with a baseball bat? No, the baseball bat you don't have to do because that's uh, to encourage flower. Yeah, no, that's for fruit trees that aren't fruiting. You right, have right. to do that um, by the light of the moon. Yes. Um, we have, and it works. Yep. All right, thank you so much. Yep, thank you very much. Time. Does Louisville Slugger come in uh, liquid form, Dick? No. No, no it does no, not. No, oh, no, no. Make sure. Nope, it's, it's, uh, <laughs> it's wood or pipe, one of the two. Wood or pipe, <laughs> okay. Uh, good morning, you're on the Countryside Auto Group uh, Jung Garden Center Hotline. Uh, good morning. Hey, I have a, a young linden tree. Okay. And it's about a 20-footer. And I've got a very low branch. A bunch of them, but one's re really a weird one. Would it be too late to cut that? It's about an inch and a half in diameter. That no, late? you can still do it. The, the trees are still pretty dormant. Now, you might get a little bit of bleeding, but it's not going to hurt the tree too much. But when you're pruning it off, what you want to do, if it's that size already, is to prune it about a foot away from the trunk of the tree so you get the weight off the branch. And then... You oh. And then you cut it right next to the trunk, so that you don't cut that little collar that's right next, to, that's right on the trunk, because that little collar is the, is the, uh, um, are the cells that will grow over that injury. Oh, very good, thank you. So just yeah, just take the weight off first, and then cut it yep. kind of close to the, to the trunk of the tree, so that it's pretty flush, and then that little collar will grow over the, over that injury. Okay. Very good, sir. Thank you for okay. your info. Yep. Thank you very much for your call. This is the Garden Doctor on AM 1430 WBEV. And let's go to the other line. You are on the air with Dick Zondag. Good morning, Dick. I just have a couple of questions on my... I have about 75 tulip bulbs coming up. And okay. Something is nibbling on the end of them for one. Okay. And don't know what it is. Is there anything you can put on them to stop that? Yes, there is. There is a rabbit repellent that okay. uh, that's actually a fungicide, and you put that on the leaves of the tulips, and uh, it makes the uh, leaves bitter to their taste, and that way they'll stay away from them. Okay. Second question: With the frost coming up, these all are up about three inches. Do I need to cover them, or anything no. I can do to protect? No. Okay. No. Okay. Tulips and uh, the spring flowers, unless we get an extremely cold weather, I mean, they'll stand a, a pretty hard frost and still, mm -hmm. um, still make it. So. All yeah. right. Then third, last question: What about the? I have one acre lot here in the town of Beaverton. What about putting lime on your lawn in the springtime first? If you're going to do that, I would I would get a soil test done first okay. to see if you really need it. Um, Wisconsin sits on a pretty big piece of limestone, mm -hmm. and uh, most of the soils in in Wisconsin don't need to be limed. 
Okay. So, okay. you know, just uh, what you do is just take a pipe and drive it in the ground sure, in a couple sure. different areas and and then take it to the county agent and they'll take it in or they'll send it into the soil lab and they can tell you um, what you have to do to the land. Yeah, well, I'm pretty particular and I was just thinking, well, maybe I should have that done and I'll, I will look into it. Thank you. Okay. Take care. Bye-bye. All Bye. right. Thank you very much for your call. We have time for at least one more caller, if not more. Good morning. You're on the air. Good morning. I've got a question. I have a holly bush. That's okay. A, just a single bush. Okay. And it doesn't flower, doesn't do anything other than grow. Uh, is it true that you got to have a male and female for those yes. in order to make them flower? Yeah, there are several plants that have the sexes on different plants. Um, some of the trees are um, honey locust and... Uh, Different. Some of them are perfect, like maples and ash and things like that. But um, holly are male and female, and so uh, the two varieties that seem to be the most hardy for this area are the uh, blue prince and blue princess. And so you need at least one blue prince for every three or four blue princesses you plant. And uh, in this area, I recommend that you cover them with a single layer of burlap for the winter, and that keeps the drying winds off from them but yeah if you've got if you've got a holly that um, hasn't blossomed I, if I had to guess I would say it's the male and so what you need is a female how can you tell the difference <laughs> <laughs> you have to know what plant you're planting <laughs> do you talk to them or they answer or no, you, you, you can bark all you want to at them and they, they won't tell you <laughs> you can tell from the flowers though if they do flower no, uh, I've yeah, never and they would flowers. flower at the end of the lease, and the male flowers are pretty hard to see. You, you have to be there when they're pollinating. Okay. Okay. Uh -huh. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much for your sure. call. We've covered sex and violets yes. in this uh, program. Exactly. Right? As we uh, finish up our, our maiden voyage on DailyDodge.com video, uh, what do we got again going at the store, uh, Dick, in your hours and locations? Okay, well, we're starting to look at spring, you know, the, the, the uh, well, onions and potatoes and things like that are going to be out as of April 1. Uh, the, the grass can be fertilized now. We have a great selection of seeds although there are spot outages so the quicker you get in to get your seed varieties the more of them that you'll get what you want now we're also where we have seed shortages where we have certain varieties that are out of stock we have a, a sticker on there that says you know if you want celebrity tomato and we're out of celebrity use uh, better boy or something like that you know we, we recommend something if we're out of a variety and Part of the problem is the seed uh, was used up last spring. We had a great uh, demand for seed last spring, and the seed producers uh, produced the seed, but a lot of it was late, and a lot of it didn't come. So um, get in there as soon as you can to get the seeds that you want. Store hours in Randolph are, uh, are 8 o'clock to 6 o'clock Monday through Friday, Saturday 8 to 5, and of course, Sunday we're closed in the Madison and Stevens Point stores, Monday through Friday, 8.30 to 6.30, Saturday, 8.30 to 5, and Sunday, 10 to 4. Dick, as always, a pleasure, and again, welcome back for our spring edition of The Garden Doctor, and we look forward to you coming back next week. Yep, it's great to be back, John, and thank you. All right, and that is uh, going to do it for the uh, Garden Doctor program for today. The uh, proceeding was a paid program. Advice and opinions expressed during the program were solely that of Jung Garden Center, uh, not WBEV 95X or Good Karma Brands.